If you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and would like to see a little bit more goings on in the world of Sly, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy podcast where you can see an extra bonus weekly guest podcast, kind of like a longer version of all the ones you're going to see on this week's Sly Guy podcast. It's every Friday with a guest episode. There's the extra Sly Guy podcast on a Monday. There's Dog Walks with Davey, my stand-up specials over there. There's other videos out there and there's more to come. And what we get in from the Patreon, we put out via progressing the show. So, hey, it's you guys helping me to help you, if that makes sense. So thanks again to all that have subscribed. We've seen the numbers shoot up, and we love to see it. So if you want to join the rest of the Sly Hards of the Rider Slys, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Podcast. Guys, my brand new show, Bits and Pieces, is coming to the Ulster Hall on the 10th of September 2022. That's right, the 10th of September 2022. It's not long away now. It'll be here in no time. And if you want to come and see me do what I love to do most, apart from housework, get your tickets now. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see you there. Tickets are available via like links in my social media, or from Ticketmaster or the Ulster Hall website. The Sly Guy Podcast is brought to you in association with Fat Bastard Burger. You heard me say that right, Fat Bastard Burger, which is the number one, numero uno, grande... Eins, I don't know, I don't know any other languages. They are the number one burger house in town. They won the best burger at the NI Takeaway Awards 2022. So I've told you, I've been I've been going on about it, I've been saying they're good. Don't take my word for it. Take the facts for answers. If you want to experience what Fast Bastard Burger tastes like firsthand, you need to get in touch. You need to go on their app. They have a bespoke app where you can go see all the delicious recipes there. Make your order and you get 10% off your first order if you order on the app. Wow. Or if you're old school like me, I want to just go in to the shop. It's on High Street and Banger, Fat Bastard Burger and Bebe Adriano's. What a spot. Get in there, get your burritos, get your burgers. Wagyu beef, big fat bur- burgers, big fat bastards. <laughs> Say goodbye to skinny burgers. You don't want a mouthful of thin meat. You want a big, girthy, been chewed in your mouth and that's what fat bastard burger deliver size and flavor what more can you ask for when and whenever you go in the shop hey say davy sent you and they'll know what that means and you'll get even more meat they haven't told me that but i presume so fat bastard burger in association with the sly guy podcast the sly guy podcast is also brought to you in association from day one with modest beer modest have not asked me to say this, but I sometimes don't listen to what I'm told. I'm going to say it anyway. They're the best beers in the world. They wouldn't say it because they're modest, but they're the nicest beers in the world. That's all I, all I drink now. Only beers I drink are modest beer because they've won me over. Not only have they won me over as a sponsor, they won me over as a beer. And I've said this before, experience the taste, experience it firsthand. Go to their website, www.modestbeer.co.uk, see where the stockists are, invest in some merch. Not only is it a delicious beer, but hey, the logo and the branding, bon appetit, bon appetit, and the cream rises to the top. I don't know what those things mean, but it's good. And if you want to follow them on social media, do it as well. The handle is simple, the handle is modest, at Modest Beer. Check them out, we love them, you'll love them too. Now enjoy the podcast. I'm the Sly Guy. Hello and welcome to the Sly Guy podcast with me, your host, Dave Elliott. Now, today's another special episode. Today is the second installment of the Best of the Guest podcast, where we've taken some segments of the Patreon exclusive guest podcast and just sort of fucking merged them into one big pie of guest goodness. And this week we have some very special guests on board. We've got Annette Kelly, who you might know as one of the brains behind the Little Penny Thoughts. You may know Aaron Butler as the brains behind... I don't. I, he's not the brains behind anything, he's just a funny, sexy, witty guy. And the guy that's going to inherit this podcast when I die. We've also got Danny Simpson, you'll know her from her murals. Not only does she do beautiful mur- murals, and they said murals, sound like an old man there. Not only does she do beautiful murals, she does beautiful artwork across the board. Her maps, which we speak about, fantastic. A lot of products available via her shop online. Check her out because I'm a big fan of Danny as well. And last but not least, with Mickey Bartlett. I mean, I just need to apologise off the bat for anyone listening to the audio here. Be like, what the hell is wrong with the audio in Mick's episode? Hey, 
I have to record this by myself. I'm a self-sufficient machine, and I forgot to hit record in the audio. Okay, so it's coming through the camera, and it's not ideal. So before people comment, the sound and the mic, I know. We'll not make that mistake again. This is what we're all about, 2022. Learning to grow, learn from our mistakes, move on from errors, move on from mistakes. You know, build bridges, walk forward, chest up, front up, man up, woman up. Do whatever you need to do, but progress. And guys, enjoy this episode because it's a lot of fun. Some of these guest episodes are the most fun podcasts I have done to date. If you want to see them in their entirety, patreon.com for just £2 a month, which is less than a coffee. Especially if you buy your coffee from, I mean, I'm not going to give away the brand of this place, but especially if you buy your coffee from these guys, which this is an all-black Americano, it was nearly three quid. For less than that, which by the way, it's not even the nicest Americano going, but for less than that, you can get all the guest episodes and much, much more. Guys, sell in, enjoy yourselves, and watch the second edition of the best of the guest Sly Guy podcast. People then slide mm-hmm. in the people's names. Are you okay, hon? Yeah. PM me, check. Yeah. That goes on. I Have see. you seen that? I haven't. Is that, that's right. not one of yours, is it? <laughs> Are the originals? Are you all right? Because <laughs> whenever someone sl- so would say to me, am I okay, hon? I'd be like, oh, I'm from a mixed marriage, so you shouldn't disrespect me, but call me a hon. It's right. offensive. Oh, right, okay. You know? So right. I'm sort of a mix. I'm a mudblood, you know? All right. So they call me a hon. I'm like, you wouldn't call me a female. Right. Like, but. no, I meant like hon. <laughs> oh, right, okay, like hon. All right. <laughs> I just thought you meant, oh no. So, are you alright, Tom? Yeah, I can. <laughs> you had COVID, mate? Are you clear? You, you, did you do a lot? No, I still you? have it. I still have it. Oh no. So, yeah, um, yeah. am I going to get it? Like, no, I, no, no, you won't get it. I, I mean, you're less than a metre away from me and you're breathing. Nah, like, you'd that's be all, right. all you're doing is just, just breathing. No, nah, you'd be alright. No, and how, and how was that for you? Like, how was the COVID experience? Like, we, we all know what it says in the news. We've all heard what it can do to you. What was your experience of COVID? Which. Which um, variant did you get? I believe I got the African one. Right, okay. Is that the Om- Omicron? Sure. But you very much are a guy that's in the... But I would have got... I like, even if it wasn't, yeah. I would have got the African variant. Why? Regardless. What do you think that is? Yeah. I don't know. Just. But you are, you are a Pokemon guy. Like You like to collect them all. So <laughs> I am a, you, I'm a safari dude. So would you like to collect all the coronavirus? Do you reckon now you've had it? You're like, fuck it, give me Delta. Give me a few other ones. Give me the regular, just give me COVID-19. I am a collector of stuff, so yeah. it would make sense if I got more. But no, I just got the, the Omicron. Omicron? Omicron? Yeah. Omicron? Omicrons? Shane has that one. And how, do, and how did you how did you find it? Um... So I think we I was talking to you the whole time through it yeah. and what was I thought was ironically funny yeah. and also a little bit annoying. Maybe for you, to be fair, not it wasn't funny for me yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. At all. But yeah. I I had the COVID yeah. and had not a symptom. Not uh-huh. a runny nose, not nope. a cold, not a sniffle, uh-huh. chest, all, everything all good. You on the other hand didn't have the COVID mm-hmm. and had all my symptoms. It's like yeah. it's like we had split COVID and I yeah. got the positive COVID, but you got the symptoms. You of know the COVID. what? Like people have called me this guy before on occasion, but I was effectively like John Coffey from the Green Mile. Like I, I, I just took your symptoms out of you and then like yeah. loads of flies came out. And it wasn't flies, it was just phlegm. Yeah. Loads of phlegm just came out of my mouth. I had the cough that I had, I had the works. I, I on paper, I, I went and did a PCR and was like, I've got COVID here. Yeah. hundred percent. And I did a PCR on Christmas Eve. So I'm like, I'm going to be stuck in this house. Chris. Then didn't have it. Christmas Negative. miracle. Christmas miracle, but then I had all the symptoms. Yes. So, so bizarrely, was, you were allowed mm-hmm. to go out of the house with yeah. all your sickness and yes. black plague. And yeah. I, I was... Absence of colour plague. I was African-American yeah. plague. All the time, you get asked for things. Like, you'll be like on a job painting a mural and you'll get someone come up and be like, either, oh, I've got walls you can paint in my house. Or do you think you could do the electrical box? Or have you got this gable wall that you could paint? So, More so, like, oh. so do you mean someone literally was like, oh, I need my walls done. Yes. I just want you to come in. Just- okay, so in Belfast, right? I actually wrote a list and it's somewhere on my phone of mm-hmm. when I paint a mural, the amount of things I get, like, like they say to me as yeah. I'm on the street. Now, this doesn't happen in any other city in the world. Mm-hmm. Say, for example, we're, we're painting in London. Yeah. And they don't even speak to you. Yeah. Like, to the point they're on their phone, walk over the mural as you're painting it. Yeah. But here, the amount of things is, ah, are you Mrs. Banksy? Do you know Banksy? I've got walls you can paint. You missed a spot. (laughs) And then you'll get someone who's like, whoop, whoop, here's the place. (laughs) Just like constant things. But it's about 10 different things that they say over and over and over again. So please don't say it to me. Little penny thoughts. Is that that your 
brand. Brand, your yep. job. Do you, um, is that a full time thing now? Yes, well, I'm a former teacher, I'm primary school teacher, and I left it about three years ago to pursue Little Panny Thoughts full time. Okay. So it's me and my sister. See, um, that that is interesting to me because I was like, like I'm sort of on, just off the, the plank here into the water, off freelance, left the day job. Yes. And to see someone, obviously, you're doing great with us now, but to leave what I would say is a profession you've worked mm -hmm. towards too. Like, obviously, it was, was teaching something you always wanted to do. Right, or and I suppose that my identity was always Miss Kelly, you know? And yeah. like my teacher, my, yeah. like my class, it was like Miss Kelly's crew, and I, and I loved that. But I knew there was just something beyond the classroom. And yeah. Like, I wouldn't be sitting here like, yeah. on a Friday morning. Yeah, I mean, and chatting be, on your podcast. Like, I've made it. Yeah, well, to be Mom, fair, I've made it. You know, you've got the skills now. To, if you can look after primary school kids, you should be able to handle me. Because my mind is of a similar level to a child, I would say. Brilliant. So, what age? Um, my, Myself, probably eight. I think eight. once I got to eight, that I was like me. Eight year you know. olds, they're, they're, they're easy to manage, you know. Well, from like an outside perspective, like I remember coming in and being like, whoa, like mm -hmm. that's on a wall. Like, you know, yeah. you know, the ones that like they seem to follow you as you like yeah. you walk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think I think that's what, why it sort of worked really well for me being yeah. here is because I had such a completely different outlook on murals and I've yeah. always done like really just positive things and it's it's quite nice like I get messages from people who were like oh I just seen a mural and it said like keep on going or whatnot mm -hmm. and I was having a bad day yeah. walking into work down Royal Avenue and I seen it and it, you've really like lifted my spirits yeah. and I'm like oh thanks like that's yeah. really nice to be yeah. able to have that type of thing and you know to do murals on there was hit the north which was street Adam Turkington yeah. again and I did one that was like on mental health and mm -hmm. all it said was are you okay yeah and it just made people have the question about these other types of issues that are in the community. Yeah. Um, but also in like, as I said, a positive way. Yeah. That's why I think it's been quite nice to have this base here. And I've had, you know, I've been lucky with a lot of work. The outfit is the thing of legend now. I appreciate that. Historic. I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard good things about it. I've heard yeah. bad things about a it. A lot of people talking about your, your penis. Well, I've said it's, apparently it was very. It had a life of its own. It had a tracksuit for itself. I didn't realize that my penis. It was prominent. Was prominent. Yes, but apparently it was. Yes, and look. Yeah. It, <laughs> M1. No, is that not oh, that band where your woman that sang Search for a Hero? <laughs> no, so no. the M1 is like the road to Tyrone. Right, okay. So that's, that's the highway to heaven, yeah. you know. Anyway, um, so in Tyrone, like, I've come from the back ass end of no road, you know, the uh -huh. sticks. Yeah. And, like, you have to pull in regularly. Can uh -huh. I say that? Regularly. Regularly. <laughs> Re regularly? Regularly. Hard to say when you think about it, isn't it? Regularly. <laughs> regularly. With, um, you know, driving on the road. Yeah. I'm like, do you know what? I'm always the one pulling over. Uh -huh. So some, well, I, I don't mind. I will pull over. But all I want is this, an acknowledgement, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, I'm not under waving every time you meet someone uh -huh. on the road, you know. But all I want is we acknowledgement. And you see them buggers that don't. Yeah. He's just angry. The anger. The anger. You, you want to the, 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 hit them. You know, you, do, you want you just, to. You want to go back in time and not pull over. Yeah. Like, come on. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? And you know, uh, funny, when I was driving here the day, I got stuck behind a tractor. Mm -hmm. So I was late, and that's yeah. not a lie, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, pulled up the, the tractor, you know, there was a brave, brave mm -hmm. queue behind yeah. the tractor, right? And I thought, this man, is he going to pull over? He eventually did. Yeah. You know, maybe there was horns. Uh -huh. I didn't participate on the, the, the horn beeping. honking. Yeah. Beeping. Did, did he care? Or and, was he just... and then he pulled over, and then it was grand. Um, and then we made it, but do I just a wee, wee acknowledgement, yeah. you know? And what about obviously? I know the sort of the progression of hand symbols in the country. If you get one of those, no, that's your you know, mate. I mean, if you get one of those, yeah. I guess. Or do you ever like we used to play this game when I say used to last week, <laughs> um, driving along, you know, and then like you pretend that you're waving, but then you wipe the window. Yeah, <laughs> and then I would get me because I would I would go by and that I'd be all. And then, I know. And then I'd be like, what can I do? I'll fix it. There's there. different symbols. So like my um, uncle Marty, he's a farmer. And he his symbols, you know. Yeah. Marty. One of those. No, one of them, you know. Does he always say Marty when he does it? <laughs> no, he doesn't. But I'd be like Marty, <laughs> and then like Daddy, he's more civil. He's more, you know, yeah. one finger. And then Mummy, maybe she's the hand yeah. going. Um, and then you have other family members that maybe just just hands on the wheel. Tell you something, obviously, there's something about a wet T-shirt when you combine 
glisten and a ditty. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the hypnotism I'm just on. Like, I'm a gl- fucking snake. Glisten is John and a ditty, so yeah. three players for Arsenal. <laughs> Glistenada Diddy! <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> 25 minutes for Glistenada Diddy. <laughs> Especially if he's gone to the African combinations for two months. <laughs> and it's Glistenada Diddy! <laughs> oh, please, somebody buy me an Arsenal shirt without a Diddy on the back. <laughs> 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 and then I was out on a night out, had mm. a few drinks, and there was like this big white wall in the bar. And I said to the owner, I was like, "You should let me like paint it." Yeah. I have no idea what I'm yeah. doing. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." And the next day, I got a message. He's like, "So when are you painting this wall?" Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like "What did I say last night?" <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a great way to hang for like, "Oh, what did I do last night?" Yeah. Like, oh, you've got a legit job to do. You're like, "What?" So your what? first mural yeah. ever. <laughs> the start of your career. Yeah. And what did you do? What was the piece? It was like an eagle bird. Don't really know what type. Did you of bird wing it, or did you just turn up the next day? Like I just yeah. <laughs> well, I like roughly drew it up, and then I was like, right, how do I actually get this like little drawing? Yeah. large scale on the wall and there was like a staircase underneath as well so you needed like some sort of scaffold I had nothing <laughs> yeah. about that so what I did was while I was at work I hope my old boss isn't listening but yeah. I was like on like gum tree like I need a yeah. projector and I found this guy and he was selling a projector for $80 and so I went to his house an hour before the mural I had yeah. to start and I was like oh look I actually only need it for one night he's mm-hmm. like oh look you can take it yeah. I'll, give me the $80 but if you bring it back to me I'll give you the 80 bucks yeah. back and I was like yeah. sweet <laughs> projected it up no idea how to link it I actually had to take my whole Mac in the yeah. car like because I didn't have a laptop at the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like, you just imagine it's a nightmare <laughs> I got the guy to put two little like A-frame tr- things yeah. with the trestle and the trestle wasn't even linked so when you stood on it it was like this yeah. most dangerous like health and safety ever <laughs> and it took me about a week but I got it done Yeah, I did it yeah, there you go. Um, so that was the start. That's how I started doing murals. My dad rarely gets in the car with me and don't blame him. But we went for a spin there one day and he was telling me that I should have my two hands in the wheel at 10 to 3. Yeah. Is that a thing? I think that's that's how when they're, when they're teaching you to drive. Nowadays, that's the proper and you have to feed the steering wheel. Aye. Rather, normally what I'm doing is feeding myself and use the other hand <laughs> on the steering <laughs> wheel. It's that? Not, it's, it's, How's that? Yeah, but if I see you now, if you were to go back to the drive, I'd fail straight up. Totally. You know, not, totally. not a hazard at all. Do you know what? I think um, I shouldn't have passed my test. My no? drive instructor was shocked. He was uh-huh. shooketh. He when I came back, he was ready to console me. He's probably like, raging, thinking he's getting more dough off you for more lessons. He's like, but, happy days. Well, I, because I was with him for three years, you know. And the, how many times did you do your test? Once. You tell me, bugger. But you know what happened? I got on very well with the driver instructor. Bright envelope, that's what that translates. You know, he, <laughs> we, like, we, def- we, had, we had the crack lick. Yeah, well, I failed mine um, first time I did it. And I was going along a road, and the, the tester, the adjudicator, said to me, he goes, you know this road is uh, 40 and I was just cruising on 55 and I went, oh why? But then didn't, didn't slow down. So he was like, you know it's a 40? I'm like, oh why? And I was just doing like 50 or something along. It's feeling like a bigger road. He was like, well you know that's a fail. And all right. The next time I did it, mm-hmm. I went in and I got too excited mm-hmm. after looking in the bonnet. And I was all boom and slammed the, the bonnet down. I broke. So then I was, I was trying to pretend it was fixed. You know, like leaning on it, being like, oh we're grand. He goes, is that bonnet broke? What are you doing? No, and then he was like, this is eating into the next slot. I have to fail you here. <gasps> I was raging, so I failed for that. So then I remember that day. It's very pricey, this whole awful. thing. I'm just thinking of all this yeah. money down the drain. Then I went to see, my mum was waiting on me at the time, <laughs> and she went and brought me home, and I and I am like, I, like a heartbroken teenager. I was like, I need, I need ice cream. So I, and I got myself ice cream, sat in my room, played my PlayStation, had my ice cream. And I don't think I did my driving test again for about a year and a half mm. after, and then I did it, and I thought it failed doing a reverse park. And I just went, you know what, the hell with that. And then forgot it and thought it failed anyway and managed to pass. You see, you're just maybe just relaxed. Yeah, that was it. And as Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or think you can't, Mm -hmm. you're right. That's part of it, I think, too. Like, is having the, you know, the the balls to try something, you know, to put in for it is, you know, I think a lot of people have a lot of self-doubt with doing anything. And it's like, 
you'd be like, oh, what's the point in doing that? It's just wasting my time. Whereas, you know, there you go, you put in for this and you got it. Now, what was the moment like when you heard you got it? Were you like, great? Or did you go, oh no, what am I going to do? I did both. I was like, oh, <laughs> woo. And then, because she's like, oh, you've got it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so exciting. And I was like, which one did I get? She's like, the big yeah. one. Oh. And I actually said to her, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I had no idea. And now I look back at that mural in particular, and there's a lot of things I would yeah. change about it. But at the same time, back then, yeah. that was that was my skill set of what yeah. I had. And I didn't have what and the experience that I have now. Uh, Art definitely it? needed. What was, what was it you did? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was all like Australian white. animals. It was just white. white. <laughs> you look at it and imagine what's there. <laughs> well, see, they said to me, what colour do you yeah. want the undercoat? And I had no idea. I was like, oh, just white. Yeah. Now, my background in my design was, like, green. Yeah. Absolute idiot. Like, I, I could have just said green, and then I yeah. would have had less to paint. But no. It was, like, literally, like, yeah. 300 cans of spray paint I ended up going through. I couldn't move my finger mm -hmm. for weeks after. Yeah. Because, like, see? Just that. <laughs> it was just, like... <laughs> I had my dad on it helping me. My mum would come down, and she'd be, like, mum can't, mum can't paint. So she'd be, like, I'll get the food, and I'll get yeah. the beers. It was mental. Like, no idea. Did you not watch the new Spider-Man? I just, I, I love that world enough to watch <laughs> the new Spider-Man. You know, I just don't, right. it doesn't float my boat, right. to be honest. Okay. I will watch it if it's on Netflix, like all of Spider-Man. And now, to be fair, I watched a Spider-Man, now you mention it. Which, which a Spider-Man did you watch? <laughs> Give me the Spider-Man's names, Andrew Garfield. You watched it. his one? Yeah. So that's and the Amazing Spider-Man? Risa Fance was in it, and he was a lizard guy. Oh, so that's the, the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. It's all right. I, it was decent. I wouldn't have said it was amazing. No. No, I would say it was decent. The Disney movies of Tom Holland are yeah. the best. Are they? Yes. And what are they better than original Spider-Man back in the day? I would say so, yeah. Like, what is so good about them? Because I have been hearing people raving about these new Spider-Man films. How are all three Spider-Men, and how does that... What's the story? Okay, so there will be spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie yet. In the new movie, all three Spider-Men come in from their own universes and join together to fight all their previous villains. And so what? you've got, you know, the Green Goblin is back. Is Willem Dafoe playing him? Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, Doc Ock, the flipping... Risa Fance in it? He as is. the lizard guy? Yes. Wow. Um, wow. Jamie Foxx is in it as Electro. Isn't he Golden Man? I mean, if you want to yeah. call him Golden Man, Golden sure. Man. The, uh, the, and so they all come together, to, and it's this big, epic, cinematic moment of them all meeting for the first time. It's very enjoyable. And how? Do, what's the explanation of how the three Spider-Men merge? So, in the, the mm. beginning of the movie, what yeah. happens is uh, Spider-Man, who is played by Tom Holland, yeah. his identity gets revealed uh -huh. as Peter Parker Spider-Man so everyone in New York and the yeah. world knows who Spider-Man is yeah. now and because of that all his family are getting a load of issues and stuff yeah. so he goes to the magical wizard Doctor Strange to cast as in spell. Doctor Strange Benedict Cumberbatch true yes, okay. who is also in the movie that's another yeah. big reason goes to him and says and is he just the one straight Doctor Strange or have I heard a rumour there may be more than one Doctor Strange there is more than one Doctor Strange now that is very strange that is very himself. Doctor Strange yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he asked Doctor Strange to cast a spell can yeah. you cast a spell where people forget that I'm Spider-Man yeah. in the middle of Doctor Strange making the spell uh -huh. Spider-Man starts to freak out because he wants his girlfriend to remember yeah. him and his, his mom yeah. to remember and all that sort of stuff and so he starts messing does with the spell does he have a whitey is that what happens he whitey's out yeah. Okay. Him and Doctor Strange whitey out. Oh, no. The spell, right. the spell goes haywire, yeah. and all the, the universes that know Spider Man start to leak into his universe, and that's right, where okay. the villains and the new Spider Man come in. Does Venom feature in it? Oh, for God's he, sake! Who's that? Oh no, don't even. No. I, I mean, great photo for yeah. him ringing. By the way, <laughs> Venom does feature uh -huh. in it, but not until the the post credits. Is it Tom Hardy? It is. Oh wow! I mean, that's a big budget film, then, is it? It's a big, but but it makes a lot of. Big and let me too. let me ask you. You're say now you are butt kermode, you're not Mark Kermode, you're butt kermode, right? You're the film critic, yeah. What are we giving it? Five stars out of five stars. What are we giving this, this latest Spider Man film? I go 4.4. 4. What brings it up to a five? What's it lacking that gives it a full hard five? Well, I just think you can't give any movie a five because then it has to be a perfect movie. You always have to give it a little bit of room, you know what? Honestly, like. It's one of them things. I don't get a lot of like, I, I don't even like this word trolling. Uh -huh. It's just throwing about. Everyone's yeah. a troll. Back in my day, a troll was the thing under the bridge. Yeah. Remember the Billy Goat's yes. Great, great. Yeah, stinking wee green fellas. I mean, he yeah. you know, Miserable. 
you know, and they had a good cross over the bridge. Yeah. Did you ever do that primary school? Yes, the only pretend. The, 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 was it the game you played? It was the game. And you had to avoid the troll. Avoid the what troll. What was sly in our school? It was always Noel. And then the teacher even called him Noel the troll. And it was just like, <laughs> not. And he's like, can I not or be Noel. one of the. Yeah, and. No, it just it rhymes. You know what? And I mean, this might be a bit of a. Um, and uh, Scarface is, in my opinion, one of the most overrated films. Really, ever? Probably. Yeah. It seems like a film so. mix from West Belfast. Just love. Yes, because it's a guy who makes a lot of money being a wee wanker. Uh, you know, so that's why people like in that. my class yeah. were in secondary school were obsessed with it. Scarface and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, it. and they used to have posters and all in their bedrooms. Whereas well, you were more impressed by like Power Rangers. Yeah, I was still on Power Rangers. But I mean, to be fair, Power Rangers similar kind of thing to Scarface but yes just, exactly the same you know they both have a lot of like this, the Power Rangers in their way like cave and all a lot of their technology it's a lot of dough yeah 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 to get that and but no Scarface is overrated another film I thought was overrated recently was The Irishman never seen it it's just like what what classic film like I, I feel like you would be just more, you're more into the comic side of things you like well, I like Jurassic sort of Park yeah, Jurassic Park great yeah like but it? I feel she. I don't know. He's just a strange guy. He is. He is. Who? He's not doctors. He's Mister Strange. Like he's not smart enough to be a doctor, Shane. But oh, sh- like he just. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of classic films. But there's some classic films I've not seen mm. that whenever I say to Catherine, she would be like, "What's wrong with you? Have you not seen that? Have you seen Back to the Futures? Yes. Ghostbusters? Yes. But again, back in the day, like I haven't seen Ghostbusters in years. Well, me neither. Yeah. And Back to the Future. Did you in see the years. new Ghostbusters? No, the one with Paul Rudd in it. Why don't you go? Why don't you <coughs> use your cinema voucher to go see that? It's great because she will not go to see it with me. Why? This is the problem. See, this is why I can't. I can't be in a relationship. But like, there are certain things. For example, we'll watch things like Ninety Day Fiance together. Great. You know, we'll watch things like Married at First Sight together. <laughs> we'll watch Jersey Shore Family Vacation. Seems a lot of her shows. Yes, but Jersey Shore, I'm all about it. Right? Okay. But if I want to watch like Match of the Day or it has to be done my own time, play FIFA in my own in time. your own time. You know, that's the thing I'm finding now is you're saying about being self-employed and, like, the jump that you made in this, like, what was your, your previous job and then when did you go, right, this is it? So what were you still doing the, the Commonwealth mural? Were you working at that point or was that...? Yeah, yeah, I was still doing that. So, like, I was working... I worked from a in a makeup factory mm-hmm. shop type of thing since I was 14. Like, shop or were you, like, in the back like an elf just, like, <laughs> making... Well, they had it. They stuff. had a shop in a in a shopping center, and that's yeah. where I started when I was fourteen. And is that legal? Oh, do you know oh. what? I actually started working when I was eleven. All oh, right. Oh wow. <laughs> My mum worked at a, like a snack bar, like a, like yeah. a what do you call it here, like a takeaway sort yeah. of thing. And I used to be in there like five five dollars an hour, yeah. just like making sandwiches yeah. or like cleaning things. It was great. I loved it. Yeah. Twenty dollars on a um. There you and go. It, that's about. 11 pound yeah. um on a um saturday i there was like go. sweet I could buy, buy like a cd or something yeah. um <laughs> so i you can work at 14 yeah right okay so i was working in a retail store and it was really weird it was like it was cool but it had like wigs and stockings and uh-huh. feather boas and it's kind of like this place where my dad would shop that sort a, of spot you know a little bit burlesque <laughs> yeah attracted an interesting crowd i mean as a 14 year old that seems a bit weird like, what was the name of the shop? Like, what was it? Can you say? Or, yeah, it yeah. was called Gypsy Rose. Right, okay. I mean, <laughs> listen, if you just want to... If you just... I just want to go... Underage workers, it's called Gypsy Rose. Racial slurs under... And, like, I'm sure the boss was a character. <laughs> this is my store. I know. I actually remember someone called up and they kept... I didn't know. I was so young and they called up and they were like, Gypsy, we want your tears. And <laughs> and I we had a product, a makeup yeah. product called Liquid Tears. Yeah. And I was so naive, I thought they wanted that. Yeah. I didn't know it was a prank call. Yeah. <laughs> I just went along with it. But I think I pranked them because yeah. I just kept going along going, Yeah, do you want the fifty mil bottle or do you want like the one liter? And they're probably going, What is this? We thought it would be it was like, No, literally, come this down to the store, I've got it behind the counter for you. This is this fourteen year old girl. So anyway, yes, I worked there and then they have a makeup factory. So I was mm. working in there from about eighteen as a okay. sales and marketing. Manager, I, I've got a wee 65 year old auntie who like lives on her own, and I just go around their house I mean, maybe once a month just for a, a just, catch, just to catch up. <laughs> I remember there was a point where like she had a new boyfriend, she was only, she was only about 59 at the time, and the two of them split up. and I was like, You're fuck. no, he didn't, but you can't. Wait till I see him, I'll treat like, him. He's stuck it up your arse. What? <laughs> 
It's not even his. <laughs> and he had a bird hat on for <laughs> fuck's sake. <laughs> no, he didn't. I wonder what the rest of the costume goes. Ponto? Uh, more like Conto, if you ask me. <laughs> so, sometimes I get my words mixed up a mm-hmm. lot. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. I say things that I shouldn't say, and sometimes I someone tells me something and I just say a different word for it. But I was in Australia. Uh-huh. Good eye. Uh-huh. Sheila. It was a Melbourne in 2011. I thought you said a mill bag then. Mil- I was a mill bag for <laughs> Mil- a while. Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> as a Melbourne, and I got bit. By? By something. Right, okay. not, a, not a human. Not a fella. Yeah, not a fella. <laughs> no, it wasn't a fella. No, it was not lucky. I was joking. Um, no, I was in the out, Not the outback. Like, just we were going camping, mm-hmm. right? And I got Brave. Bit, by brave, the way, yeah. Brave in Australia. Why am I doing accents? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it's only the name there. It's just not okay nowadays. <laughs> so, no, no. So then um, I got... I'm, the reason why I'm rubbing my shoulder... Or my shoulder yeah, well, there, there you say, go. Yeah. Is because that's where it was, and I remember like ringing mummy. The way you're doing that, did it? Oh, I know, I was big, yeah. like I was big and pointy and stuff. It was like, in, like in fact, inflamed. Yeah. I got bit by something, some creature. Um, and I, not in there. It wasn't even out back, but it was a wee bit removed yeah. from Melbourne. We yeah. went camping, right? Yeah, yeah back so, hostel and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, I rang me ma, and I was uh-huh. like, mummy, like my. My arm is swelling up here, like yeah. you know. I need to, uh, you know. She's a, a former nurse. Yeah. But still, no, mum is all like, oh, you probably need um an antihistamine." Yeah. And I was like, "Histamine." I was just like, "Oh my god, antihistamine!" Yeah. Like, so I was like, like, "So go to the pharmacist yeah. and ask for an antihistamine." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Antihistamine, antihistamine." And even going to the pharmacy yeah. or the chemist, I was like, saying this in my head, "What did I ask for?" I don't know. What did I ask for? And there was people behind me, uh-huh. and there was you? a young male pharmacist. What did you ask for? A hysterectomy. I was going to say that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Ahead, was so say. I was like, um, <laughs> so I'm nice, I need a hysterectomy. He's and he's like, all like, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. And I was all like, I just hist, antihistamine. And I, I knew exactly yeah. what I said. Yeah. And, you know, and we laughed, whatever, and I got my antihistamine, and then I didn't need a hysterectomy. What do you think you'll be doing at 55? That's a good question. I think it's my destiny just to keep dating. Will you be a man? I, I mean, there's nothing against this, and if you say yes, no problem. Would you be a man who would dabble ever in a wee bit of Botox or anything would you would you want to keep yourself young would you add a tint to your hair if it went grey see here's the thing I always sort of have said no mm-hmm. but now I think the older I get yeah. the more I go yeah maybe 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 there's something about this Botox yeah. now but then they wouldn't get the lips <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking brilliant. Just yeah, if I just got the lips and nothing yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing I would do, I think, or that I would openly admit to doing anyway, is uh, I would definitely get one of those hair transplant things. Mm. But again, see with me, I have thought I won't because I'm already, I think, too far for it. But also, I think you're a good candidate. But the lines are so obvious now. Mm. It's like almost, you may as well just wear a wig. But here's the benefit of your yeah. situation. You've quite a good frontal hairline. Yeah, but starting to separate as an island here. Is it's, it? It's coming apart. But that's what I'm yeah. saying. If you could fill in the island, yeah. the front will be sweet. Yeah. So then you'll not see that obvious line. Yeah, well, you Fill should, in the island. Why don't, you just, why don't you do a Paddy McDonald and just be like, do you use, what did he say <laughs> to me? Yeah, we do were you use saying, that? do you spray your hair on or something just said? I was like, well, no. But it came out of nowhere. It was yeah. so cheeky. It was like, obviously, he, Paddy's very <laughs> much like a think. child, isn't he? Like, he'll sit and he'll look at something for ages and he'll yeah. say nothing and I'll just blurt it out. Yeah, and he blurted out, do you, do you spray your hair on then or what? No. <laughs> no, it don't. So fucking And rude. he's just sitting there in a big hot office with a full coat on, but on the top, do you do that? Yeah. No, it don't. Six black Viagra yeah. in his pocket. <laughs> I know, well, four. You know, two, two gone. You know, <laughs> really. Yeah man who came by and he was complaining to me mm-hmm. about the price of the colouring in book yeah. and he like what happened was he walked in and I was serving someone else and mm-hmm. he grabbed the book and passed it to me and I yeah. just assumed because there was another girl on yeah. the day before I assumed he already knew what it was yeah. and so I put the price in oh. and I showed him the yeah. the machine and he just tapped his card like it says the price and he yeah. tapped his card and walked away and then about an hour later he comes back he's like did you really just charge me £25 for uh-huh. a colouring in book and I was like yeah yeah i was like the price was on it and he's like oh you know like that's that's a bit expensive and i was like look i'm happy to give you a refund like yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that you feel like that i was like it's not actual like 
I've designed the whole book yeah. and it's taken me like months to actually yeah. do because I have to actually illustrate every page. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, there's a stock image. Yeah. I have to draw it. It takes yeah. like hundreds of hours sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I tried to explain that to him. He's like, yeah, but how many coloring books are you going to print? And I was mm-hmm. like, well, I don't really need to tell you that. Yeah. Do you want a refund? Like, I'm happy to refund you. Yeah. He goes, you live and you learn. And he just walked away. And did he keep the book? <laughs> Result? <laughs> like, Think this, and he's a strapping young man. He's, sure. a, he's an athlete. Sure. He's in good shape. He's big. He's strong. Mm. He can throw a hard punch. I'm excited for the day he fights someone that's mm. just too good for him. Would, here's one. Would he lose in a boxing match to Francis Ngannou? Yeah. Why? Because size. But. But. You thought Tyrone Woodley would knock him out? He's quite big guy too. No, Woodley's smaller than Jake. Yeah, but still big enough to knock him out, you would think. But Woodley compared to Francis. Well, Francis is, is like. Yeah. F- would Brock Lesnar beat him in a boxing match? Um. It's a good question. Hey, this is the thing. Because he's not a boxer, he's just. Well, he is a, a boxer. But all these other people are not boxers. Don't know, like fucking Lesnar's. A- Would the Big Show beat him in a boxing fight? No. No? Well, I don't know. Here's the thing. Jake yeah. wouldn't be able to reach him, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just, he's the Big Show. He's too too tall. Would, I'm trying to think of other people. I like how you go for the weirdest people. Yeah. The, the, the fight in boxing matches. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I, I, there will either there will come a time where he loses or he will quit. Mm. You know, like he said, if he, that whole Dana White thing. It's a load of balls. I just want to see him fight someone legit. Like a legit boxer that'll just wreck him. What about... What about what? any local boys we get to... Who, who's like his weight class from here? No one really, Big Rogie's about the only one in his weight <laughs> class. <laughs> that's, yes. a, that's a good question. Would Rogie beat him? Yes. But Rogie's now been out of the game for a few years. He's quite old. Maybe. This guy's been training flat out for how long? I still think... To me, Rogie always has been a stonehead. It mm. takes a lot to put him out. Yeah. He's not necessarily going to be... It's Homer Simpson. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would like to see Martin Rogan fight Jake Paul. Back in 2015, when I wasn't in the great place mentally, I started sharing quotes on yeah. my personal page. And then yeah. my friend might have rang me and like, are you all right? Yeah. Hum. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh God, I... But then I decided then to to create a, a safe space online where maybe uh-huh. other people would get good from it. Mm-hmm. And it came, the I derived, der, the name derived from a penny for your thoughts that was right, okay. inscribed in my sister's purse, who's now my partner in crime. She's a creative designer, uh-huh. graphic designer, and she created a logo. And then I just started posting and it just started like spiraling. Uh-huh. But for years, I wasn't proud of it. I yeah. was paranoid about it. Yeah. You know, so putting stuff, like, like putting yourself out there was making you there. feel, yeah. And then it's just started coming on stories and chatting and mm-hmm. putting a wee bit of personality behind it. Now, I know I'm not for everyone and I would get an odd message that's, you know, oh, what a dose. Yeah. But that message wasn't meant for me. Yeah. And I'd be like, hee hee. Yeah. But see, you see stuff like that. Again, nowadays with online, so much of it is negative and so mm. much of it is bringing people down or mm-hmm. causing... Issue. So to put something out there like positivity, I think mm-hmm. it should be praised. And I think there's right. a lot of people have have got behind the quotes, and you you see them everywhere. You know, you see your brand, and you're everywhere, and people sharing them, That's and it good. does lift people up. Well, that so, d- that definitely makes me makes me proud. And what would it would hate to become is toxic positivity. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. don't worry, be happy. Yeah. Even though that's a great song. Yeah, Smasher. It's yeah. a deadly song, but you know, don't worry, be happy. Sometimes you have to worry, and sometimes you can't be happy. Yeah. And also, another quote that irks me. How did this turn into quotes that irk me? Yeah, is like you know, be positive. Yeah, you know, you can't just be positive. You have to take action to feel more positive. Yeah. and that's what I, you know, my personal development coach and I really learned that. Yeah, because back in the day, I would have thought you know positivity all the way, but now yeah. it's. Like, it's actually just that wee bit of optimism. Yeah. And if you're going through hard times, you know, it can't and won't last forever and keep going. Yeah. And we all dip. Yeah. Jeepers. And creatives. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many people in this industry that, and it's not a front. 
it's no longer a front, but there's times when you're peaking and there's times when you feel yeah. a wee bit low. And I've accepted that with me mm-hmm. and I'm not always going to be on it all year round. Yeah. We are. Do you think this happened overnight? No, no it's cultivation. It's, 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 exactly. Like, we've created it's this a, over a life the year. of access, yeah. like rock stars. Like, you know what? When you're younger, <laughs> when you're younger, you're all like, oh, fuck, I need to get in shape. And I'll see the older I got, I'm like, Henry, it's number one baller. You know, this is a sign of wealth. Like, see, back in his what, day. What I've noticed that as I've got older now, because my skin's starting to get thinner, because I'm getting older, my tits have got smaller, yeah. so I'm like, it works out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> An excruciating pain in your hands, but I've got exactly, your, yeah, your pecs I'm, bounce back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can't walk, but sure, it's not the way. But that's the beauty of life, and then you have to look at every every cloud. Every cloud is a silver. It's, <laughs> it's not rain. It's <laughs> <laughs> flakes. It's dandruff. Yeah. I've actually had to start using the head and shoulders in my beard. Man, I, so I had COVID uh, two weeks ago. I had like a week isolated in the house, uh-huh. like 10 days. Couldn't like I was, I was showering, I wasn't going yeah. anywhere. And I combed my beard to go to the shop yeah. for the, the day of the load out yeah. and fucking it like full fags. Yeah. <laughs> like Rabina cartons, the amount of stuff yeah. it fell out of my face. But it's, a beard is a mad thing because you, you, you don't realise it, but then see if you were a rustle it. Aye. It's oh fucking my wild. God, yeah. I'm, I'm like, actually worried. Yeah, like see now I'm looking down, oh fuck, I shouldn't wear yeah. black as much as I do, shit. I, I bought a fucking a new gilet and I went to the shop and I was like, the amount of stuff, whatever, it's because it's a fleece lining. Yeah. Like, I can't even rub this off. Yeah, like it's just, like, I'm just moving about. Yeah. It's like wet salt. <laughs> like, but like the only people like that, that with the fucking thing are babies like baby like my, my one year old yesterday we had fucking weird drama with her right um, my mum I was doing a podcast and then I had a phone in the airplane mode went out a few missed calls from my mum now my mum with all the love in the world with only love in my heart worries too much about right. stuff like everything's a fucking drama for her it's like oh my god it's like listen I've tried to get through to Catherine I can't because she's at work, you know, saving, saving the world. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, fucking nurse is fantastic. And uh, sticking it through to her, or so I try to throw to you. Now, see if someone phones me to ask medical advice. Right. Go else, Google. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's anything yeah, for you. She goes, like, baby cut her finger the day before, and she goes, she was eating a, eating a pl- she had a plaster on, she's eating a brioche, plaster's gone. I think she's eating the plaster. And my mum's all going, well, if she gets glue poison, once it gets stuck in her way inside, and all this shit. Right. Do, and like, Google, it's like, well, she'll settle it out, you know, she'll oh, be yeah. fine. But my mum was panicked. She was, I phoned the doctors and they, they're busy. And once I phoned the NA and they were like, well, you know, she should just pass it. But if you if you think it's that serious, bring her in. Oh, my yeah. mum's fucking flustered and all that. I was like, oh, that's, that's grand. So we went home, we sort of, the baby was fine, great spirits, nothing wrong with her. And we went to change, change her nappy later in the day. And the plaster just fell from somewhere in her being. Like she'd somehow got this plaster either in her top or in, oh, yeah. in her nappy, something. I was just there, I said my mum, and like I think my mum nearly started crying relief. I was like, you need to go to right, see You were about to cut therapist. that child open. You know, it's like the that. shark and jaws. Because then this is, this is when I have no idea about medical stuff. I'm like, is she going to have to go? Are they going to have to eviscerate her and fucking cut up her way intestines? Well, I was panicking because I don't fuck up. Did single word science, I got a D. I'm going to fuck up in the I go fucking Edwardian fucking surgeon. I'm like, I'll take this. But I think, like, I don't know, she shit out, but my mum was so panicked. I'm like, like you know when you just start that emotional, she was so like, oh, the generic cried. Aye. About, I was like, you need to fucking, you need to shrink your you fucking food. Right, yeah. You could, it's more important, hygiene is more important than fashion because you could be a smelly bastard wearing a Gucci t-shirt or you could be a clean p- bastard in a salmon hoodie. <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah, to be fair, it's nice. Like, it's pretty nice and expensive. Yeah. But this Kim Jong-un t-shirt, not so much. Oh, I just realised that's Kim yeah, Jong-un. Yeah, I thought it, it was Dennis Rodman. No, well, both friends. Bo- both you know, both very <laughs> close friends. <laughs> easy, to, easy, easy to confuse. Have you ever done one where you've gone like halfway through and then be like, oh no, I've put that in the wrong place? And do you have to then just go, what did I do here? I did one of the Gold Coast and it's like a completely different layout to mm. what I normally would do. Now what I just want to point out to listeners is you, you're referring to your Gold Coast North Downs are Gold Coast here, so I'm hoping there'll be a new Gold Coast coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Gold Coast in Australia. Surface yeah. Paradise, most people yeah. know it from. Well, no, it's just where I'm a Paradise celebrity where was filmed before yeah. it went to Wales. Yeah, I mean, what? How got it? Are you? If you're the celebrity, you're like, oh, I'm going to go out here. <laughs> I'm going to be. I'll do. I'm a celebrity probably for a couple of days. If I don't like it, I'll just be in a five star hotel for the next few weeks. Like, now you're going to Wales, mate. <laughs> I know because when they get booted out, they go to the Versace. Yeah. Which, like I remember, like my grandparents coming out from like. <laughs> coming up from the shackle to Australia yeah. and my mum going let's go get a photo out the front of the Versace yeah. <laughs> and there's photos of us being like yeah. <laughs> it's that nice and then those guys just go to an Ibis and wheel yeah. somewhere like oh this is not quite the same uh, so um, yeah no that's I did it and then I've done it but I haven't released it because I'm like oh, 
I don't know if I like it that way, and it, it literally has taken me a hundred hours. Well, do you know what? Rather if than... anyone takes anything from our talk today, is just if you have a wee vision, and no matter how small it is or how silly you might think it is, yeah. just go for it. Stop caring what other people think because they're not thinking. They're thinking, "What am I going to eat today?" You know they're what? That's, about you. that's a good point. Stop thinking about what other people think and do what you want to be doing. And what other people think of you is none of your business. Correct. There has been like times, like when, even when I was at the market, yeah. and this man came up, and he's like, "Just letting you know, whoever did that USA map, he mm-hmm. was he was from de- Texas, and he's like, just letting you know, whoever did that USA map, they've put Vegas in the wrong spot." And I was like, "Okay, I'll let them know." Yeah. And in my head, I was like, "I didn't, but I didn't want to say it." Yeah. And I was like, "No, it's not. It's like there's a bit of artistic license to it. You see." Yeah. <laughs> like, like no, it has to be there. That's like, where it it's is. not like you don't use that map to get around the US. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? You don't just imagine like, someone did, you didn't even realize. It's like right, I need to find New York. <laughs> <laughs> like on the. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. obviously, it's not like it's in the roundabout but, area. But then you th- you think that there, I guarantee there's somebody out there who would be like, no, I've got a map, and you're like, no, you're not the same, and you're like, oh no, I'll get there. Well, it was the same map? Someone on TikTok was like. Um, why are we just a potato? And it was Idaho, yeah. and I was like, "Well, like, <laughs> that's what it's known for. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> You're not a potato, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Someone takes it to heart. What? <laughs> Am I just a potato now? <laughs> I know. So anyway, look. Oh, what's it? How, how they how they happen? Like, I try and make them as ju- the funny one was from Northern Ireland, yeah. and I put the buck fast over. I think it was in like County Tyrone. So yeah. I was like, um, "Why is that there? That should be in Logan." <laughs> it was just like it's not geographically no. correct. Like yeah. if I did the map geographically correct, a lot of Northern Ireland would just be yeah. like sheep and. Like, do you know what I mean? I have to have four things. <laughs> I'm the slack guy.